Hi, and welcome back for another episode of Haltech Technically Speaking. Today, we're here with a GM LS2, one of GM's most popular engines, and we're gonna be fitting it with a Haltech terminated harness. After fitting your GM LS2 to your project car or your race car, the next most daunting task is the wiring harness. But Haltech's got that covered. We've made a fully terminated engine harness that we just lay over the LS2, plug everything in, we need to wire up a few of the wires inside for our start and our battery, and you're ready to race. Let me show you how it's done. The first thing we need to do is separate our banks out of our terminated engine harness. And we can tell which bank's which because we've got an ignition loom. The ignition loom is marked ignition bank one, and on this side of the harness, it's marked ignition bank two. This side being bank one, we're just gonna lay the harness loosely over one side. We're gonna lay the harness over bank two loosely. So now we've got a bit of an idea where all the plugs sit and then we can go through and we can identify each connector and where they plug in. Now that we're focusing on bank one, we're gonna look at this side of the harness and we're gonna separate it into two separate sections. The part that has to sit under the exhaust manifold and the part that sits up the top in between the injectors and the rocker cover. Let's take a look at the part that sits under the exhaust manifold first. And we've got our knock sensor connector that we can just plug right in. We've also got our cam angle sensor connector. It's very, very important that we make sure that this sensor wire is routed correctly because it's one of the most important sensors on the engine. We just plug that one in the front here. And lastly, we've got our O2 sensor connector if you're using the Haltech CAN wideband kit. Now that we've plugged the bottom in, we're gonna go along and plug the top in. The first thing that we're gonna do is run the long lengths all the way out. They're the ones that have got our air temp, our coolant temperature, and our alternator connector. The reason why we're gonna do these first is because they lay in between the injectors and the rocker covers. If we do this last, it'll all look a little bit messy. Just keep in mind, the reason why I haven't plugged in the air temperature and the alternator plug right now is that this engine's normally got an air temp sensor in the intake stream somewhere, and we obviously don't have an alternator attached to this engine right now. I'll just leave those two just lying down the side there, and we'll move on to doing the ignition. So we'll move on to doing the ignition and the injectors. The next step is to just plug in our ignition loom. So we're just gonna loop it under the fuel line, plug it straight into the connector. And now the last step along bank one is to plug our injectors in. All these connectors are the same, so make sure you plug the right plug into the right injector. The easiest way to do this, you'll notice that all of the plugs on this harness are labeled really well. So we can see here, INJ1, injector one, injector three, injector five, and injector seven. So I'm just gonna neatly lay them in, plug them in, making sure I plug the right plug into the right injector. You'll hear a, a, a positive click when they go in and you know that everything's set up correctly. We're gonna move across to bank two now. It's got the same number of coils, the same injectors. There are different sensors bank to bank. So we'll plug our ignition and our injectors in, then we'll go through each of the different sensors. Now that we've plugged in the ignition and our injector loom on this side, I've just laid the harness in between the rocker cover and the injectors. At the front of the engine here, we're gonna plug in our drive-by-wire throttle body connector, and we're also gonna plug in our map sensor connector. On the back of the harness, we've got an oil pressure sensor connector that just plugs straight into the factory oil pressure sensor, and we've also got this ground terminal. So we need to bolt this onto one of the pre-existing holes in the back of the cylinder head. As we move under the exhaust manifold here on bank two, we've got a couple of sensors that we need to plug in. We've got the crank sensor, we've got the second knock sensor, and we've also got a wire for the starter motor solenoid. Obviously on this engine, we won't be plugging that in because we don't have a starter motor connected. We've also got the plug for the second CAN wideband if you're using the Haltech dual channel wideband controller. Now that we've plugged in all the factory sensors, the coils and the injectors, we've got a couple of connectors and a couple of wires left, so we're nearly there. We've got a red and a black that need to be connected to our battery positive and negative, very important. 
We've also got these four extra connectors. Now, these are auxiliary connectors that we're offering just in case you want to add extra things on top of the sensors that you've already got on the engine. So a fuel pressure sensor that you may want to add, a boost control solenoid, an extra input and an extra output just in case you want to add any motorsport or any logging features extra. If you don't have a need for any of these extra inputs or outputs, simply tuck them away and you don't need to reconfigure anything. Now that we've plugged in all of our sensors, injectors and our ignition in the engine bay, we're going to move into the cabin. The loom travels through a two inch firewall grommet that's used to protect the harness from any sharp edges as the harness comes through the firewall. Moving to the fuse box, you'll notice that we've got five relays and we've got five fuses. There's an extra space to add an extra relay and an extra fuse if you want to add something extra. We've also got our ECU connectors that plug into our Haltech Elite Series ECU, as well as our CAN wideband connector if you choose to add the additional Haltech CAN wideband. The last part of the wiring we need to do is the in-cabin wiring that unfortunately we can't terminate for you. So we'll run through these wires now. In the instruction manual it comes with the harness. It's also described really well with all of the wire colours. On the harness it's also got each wire is labelled as well. So if you're not too sure what it is, just read the label on the wire, have a look at the wiring diagram and you'll know where it goes straight away. We'll go through them quickly now and we're going to see that we've got two extra inputs. Again, if you're not using them, simply curl them up and put them to the side. We've got a taco output if you want to drive a monster taco. We've got a 12 volt supply for our fuel pump. If your pump's going to draw more than 10 amps continuously, you may want to use this wire to set up a bigger relay solution. We've got the wiring that goes to our O2 sensor gauge. So if you fit a wideband O2 sensor gauge inside the car, these are the wires that'll be connected to that. The last two are the ones that are really important, the ones that you definitely need to use. The wires labeled with accelerator pedal are very important. They're used to wire to the plug that suits the specific throttle pedal that you're using in your application. We would have fitted this, but because you're using this in an engine conversion, we've got absolutely no idea what throttle pedal you're going to use. The last wire is our switched 12 volt wire. This wire needs to get 12 volts when the key is in the ignition position and in the crank position. And that's it. Once you've plugged the engine in, you've gone through, you've set up your throttle pedal, you've wired out to your fuel pump, all we need to do is plug out Haltech Elite 2500 series ECU into the ECU connectors, load a base map, and the thing's ready to start and run. Thanks very much for watching. As always, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. My name's Scott, and I'll see you next time.